We're talking about healing. So we're going to hammer that, pound that, establish that in you. Because here's, you know, like I said, the, we got some fat to it, but I heard that doctor say myself, and it wasn't any, it was just like radio news, you know, you go around and you go around and you go and that's what that person said, that, um, that it's obsolete because it's protein chain or something is not able to fully ward off that delta thing. That's what it was saying. It, it, it's lost <coughs> the ability to, yeah. So you all can look it up. So for me, I don't even care. But it's good for people that actually put a lot of their confidence and trust in that that, that program. Mm -hmm. Because it shows you you shouldn't put your confidence and trust in that program. Mm -hmm. Because they're, now they have to come up with something else. And then by the time they come up with something else, something else will morph. That is right. So man's going to have to keep coming up with something else as the devil keeps morphing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. But you Amen. Come on. should just be simple enough to hear and be healed. Amen. <laughs> hear and be healed. Uh -huh. That's it. Don't sit around playing around with this stuff. Uh -huh. Because for the, the person that's outside of Christ, they need all those things. Uh -huh. The person that's not born again, that, that has no revelation of who they are and what Jesus done for them and all the things and what's available to them, they need to protect themselves. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. They do because they're, they're, uh, they're subject to the enemy. That's right. The God of this world. But for you and I who, who uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He has spared not of some good, but how shall he not freely give us all things? Who made available to you all his benefits. If you don't look at your benefit package, then there's no one to blame. Amen. You Amen. have to spend some time studying to show yourself approved. Right, right. Otherwise, I read this last this last verse real quick. Let's see if I pull out first Chronicles. Let's show you. I don't want to just quote something. I want you to see it. No, no, no. Let me I don't remember. Second Chronicles sixteen. Ready? Verse 7. Just hear this in the spirit. And at, the, and at that time, Hananiah the seer, which is a prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, said unto him, Because you relied on the king of Syria, you relied on the Lord, and, and not relied on the Lord, your God, therefore, is the host of the king of Syria, escaped out of thy hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubim a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and the earth, looking to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect. What do you mean perfect? I just read it to you. What's a perfect heart? Those that rely on God. Very simple. Ready? Am I reading the Bible? Amen. Amen. Here and you've done foolishly now. Therefore, for henceforth, you're going to have wars. Then also was mad. See, this is what happens. If you're mad at you this morning, you're like Asa. Because you ain't rejecting David. You're rejecting the word. You're rejecting the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So if you're mad, remember this. If ever you sit in this church and I'm preaching and you're mad, it's, you're not mad at me. You're mad at your own God. Amen. That's your problem. Amen. I know that. I know that. You're mad at God because you ain't obedient. That's why. Right. Right. You don't like his word. You like your word. 
I'm not saying you and picking on anybody and being too hard, but I'm just telling you, you mad at me and don't bug me one bit. Amen. You're mad at God. A lot of people will never say that, though. They'll never go, I'm mad at God. They'll go, no, I can't pass it. He can me. He's hard. He's uh -huh. hard. Right, right, I'm right, going to share right. something that helps me get more money in my pocket and, and be happy. Well, I'll tell you, if you live this life, you'll be happy every day of your life. Because if you walk in the light as he in the light, you'll have pure fellowship. You will never be miserable. You'll always have joy. You'll always have peace. You will. They go to church with it. They ain't walking with them. When you walk with him, there's joy every day, even in the midst of happen. There's joy. There's joy. That's why Jesus said, my peace I give it. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Amen. Stop Amen. allowing yourself. That's why people that leave churches, why do you leave church? Oh, you were mad at David. You are mad at God. You don't like God's message. Well, I just don't like the way he said it. No, you don't like the message. Come on, now. You can't give you better go somewhere else and listen to someone tell you stories. And then all of a sudden, COVID shows up. And the life gets out. And have it. And you don't even know how to get yourself out of a big man. That shows how smart you are. Come on, you don't even have a brain like Abraham. That's why Abraham is a follower of faith. Because when Abraham got in trouble, you know what he did? Ran right back to Shishem. Right back to Shishem and got it right with God. Uh -huh. Read the story. Yeah, yeah. He didn't just keep wandering around in the wilderness doing what he wants. He said, hold on here, man. Something ain't right. I got to get back to the place I first heard of God and reestablish myself. Uh -huh. and pull you can take strength in the things that remain. Uh -huh. Come on. Unless they die. Did you hear that? Strength in the things that remain. That means get back to that place. Uh -huh. Return to your first love. Oh, do we need more scriptures? Come on, there. Come on, there. Come on So look what he said. Then... He, he said, you done fool. If God says you done foolishly, you did foolishly. And also was mad at the seer and he put him in prison. See that? For he was he, and he was in the rent. Now, thank God, awesome. thank God, Hananiah was a man of God. Because most men of God would have went, I went and spoke to him. I did your will. And now he put me in prison, Lord. Man, 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 man. That's just the results of the vocation you're in sometime, friend. You might go to prison for preaching the gospel if you're really doing the word of God. So he said, also put him in prison, for he was in a rage <laughs> because of this thing. And also crushed some of the people at the same time. And behold, the acts of also, the first and last, lo, they're in the book of Kings and Judah, of the kings of Judah and Israel. And also, you ready? Also was 30 and 9 years old. 39 in, in his reign. And he was diseased then. See that? Mm -hmm. Until the disease was exceedingly great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord with the physician. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. -huh. Uh -oh. Come on now. Uh-oh. Come on here. He didn't seek the Lord. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I'll call Dr. Phil. No, no. Dr. No. Fauci. No, no. Dr. Oprah. Oh, yeah, she's not a doctor. Uh, huh? Come on now. Sought not the Lord. See, all he had to do is pull a Hezekiah. Come on now. I don't remember Hezekiah. Amen. Hezekiah. Oh, wait. We have to go there now for you. Hold Amen. on. Amen. That's just because we need to establish how to get healed. Let's just get established how to get healed. Uh, oh, Lord. Here you go. Hezekiah, 37. Hezekiah. I mean, Isaiah. Isaiah 37. I, go ahead. Yeah, Hezekiah. <laughs> Isaiah 37. Oh, man. 
Uh, so, There was, there was different pressures coming, and Hezekiah was uh, giving place to certain things. Uh, so anyway, look at, uh, I'm not going to be 37. Look at, look at uh, first, uh, chapter 38. In the days was Hezekiah sick, and Isaiah, Isaiah came to him and said, this is what the Lord says to you. Set your house in order. Imagine that. Imagine that. See, we you want to have a prophet today? I mean, don't you think some prophets would know that some people would be leaving this planet? Just like, just like, uh, uh, Henry and I went to Asa. Isaiah went to Hezekiah. Now, why did God send these men? Think about this. Let me take a side note before we get the word of God. Because he loved them. See, if you can't see love there, see, if, if see, God will say things to you to give you a chance to come out from among them, to repent, to turn to him, to respond to him, to pull like what they said to Peter. Well, what do we do? Be, back. be immersed in the Christ. So right here, Azza didn't respond correctly, did he? He got mad, he went to rage, and he locked up the preacher. So then, he sought the physicians. Because once you harden yourself to God, here you go, you ready? Once you harden yourself to God, now you need a, a goggles, a mask, a shield, gloves, and everything else to live life on my friend owns a restaurant. He told me on the Friday night, people come in mad. They were mad because people had ordered it was junk. It was junk. They ordered their food, and then all of a sudden, some people were like waiting, and others came in. They're like, "Why are they waiting? They need to be outside." See, people are free. So the reality is, you know, Hezekiah. Now, Isaiah goes to him and says, "Hezekiah." Set your house in order because you haven't been listening to uh -huh. the voice of the Lord your God, like we read last week. If thou would diligently hearken to the voice, he never said keep commandments, he just said hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Remember, part of the Old Testament God. Hear the voice of the Lord your God. Exodus 15. If thou would diligently say diligent, hearken, that means listen, give uh -huh. me. So the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. The voice of the Lord your God comes through three places. It comes through the Word of God, the relationship you have with the Holy Ghost, and through the pulpit. Those are and through one another, encouraging with the Holy Ghost. That's how the voice of the Lord changes every believer in those four ways. That's it. There's no other way. Then come through television, so to speak. Then come through billboards. It comes from the main place, which is the Word. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit. And then other believers sharing and encouraging, provoking one another, and loving the words. We're, we're from the Bible ministry groups, right? Amen. So the reality is, is he says, Hezekiah, set your house in order. And Hezekiah's response was, I'm right, you're wrong. Get out of here, I'm going to lock you up. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed. See that? Uh -huh. And look what God's response was in verse 5. <laughs> All of a sudden, go now and say to Hezekiah, thus says the Lord God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Behold, I'm going to add unto you 15 years, and I'll deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the Assyrian, and I'll defend the city. Then Hezekiah Began his writings in verse 9. The writing of King Hezekiah when he was sick. I said, In the cutting off of my days, I shall go to my grave, and I am deprived of, of my years. I said, I'll not see the Lord, even the Lord, in the land of the living. 
I shall be whole man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My age is departed. Something is removed. Blah, blah, blah. And he goes on and he says, I, he went on and he spoke this whole thing. And you can see. He said, Lord, these things, you will recover me and make me to live. Verse 17, behold, the peace I have great bitterness. But thou hast in your love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. <laughs> if thou hast cast my sins from behind my back. There's a man of God. <laughs> Amen. 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 There's somebody who said, forget their positions. Lord, I'm in trouble. Man, you delivered my insane thinking. You love my soul enough to tell me the truth about myself, and now you escorted me out of the pit of corruption because I was deceived and on my way to the grave where I ain't going to see your face no more. Amen, amen. And fell down and begin to weep and, and begin to be on his face before the living God. And by the time Isaiah got halfway down the block, the Lord said, just say it, the Lord Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah. Because I think I identified uh -huh. some faith. Amen. My eyes were looking, my ears were perfect, uh -huh. and I heard a voice out of uh -huh. Israel. I heard yes, the yes. sound of faith come on, out of that man's lips. Amen. I saw his heart come out of the way from his humanity, yes, yes. his self knowledge, on, his education, uh -huh. and look to the living God. And Amen. now God tell him I'm out in 15 years. Amen. 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 And if Hezekiah was smart, he would have plopped back down and said, Thank you, Lord, for 15. I want a double portion of that. Amen. Amen. If he had knowledge. Wipe it all clean, Lord. Not mine, but thine. I am willing and obedient. Speak the word and I act. Mine, but thine. That's it. Show me a Christian like that. I'll show you someone walking in power. Amen. 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 Show me. Amen. Amen. Now, I ain't got no notes here, so you know this. Amen. Oh my God. Come on now. <laughs> there Amen. ain't no notes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Come on, Just brother. the attitude of faith will get Amen. you a whole lot of with God. Amen. Amen. No. Amen. I mean, it ain't, and the, it ain't just your tears, because God sees all uh -huh. kinds of tears. But the reality is, he wants to, that that was somebody who recognized that God loved him. Amen. That he was insane. Yeah. That yeah. he needed to come to a census. Right. Like, look, man, I, I I brought this on not only myself but my nation. Lord, woe is me. I shut my mouth like Job said. Right now, living God, take all me, forgive me, Amen. throw my sins from from behind. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. wash, purge, purify, right. cleanse my conscience Amen. from dead works. Yeah. Set me in my place, strengthen me, give me back the years of my life that I will serve you. All. I tell you, man, you won't do that many times in your life before you finally just wake up and go. There's nothing in the world left for me. See, a lot of people they dabble with the world, but they ain't never had this heart. No, they have you say you can't judge it. Man, I've done a lot of fruit. That's it, that's it. I'm not one to say I ain't made sins or mistakes, but the reality is, I tell you this, when the Lord shows it, you better fall on your face, lay those things down every way you sin, and come up out of the fresh baptism, show them the living God, want to know him, and not get up and make a bunch of pitiful excuses about why you did this, and they hurt me, and they did that, and, and that's why I did this, Lord, and Lord, you know I acted all sinful and, and acted this way because they did that, Amen. You don't even want to go before the Lord with that. No. That's it. The only thing you can go before the Lord is my life is the favor, Lord. I don't want to waste my years and all of a sudden get to a place and then be trying to figure out how to serve God. That's going to happen to a lot of people. Anyway, let's get to where we got to go this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So healing is available. Amen. A lot of healing just comes from obedience. Right. Living a continual, constant life with him. Then you don't have to worry about COVID and Delta and American Airlines and, and Southwest variants and everything else. 
You won't have to be concerned. You just look under Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, Lord, that's it. Because I need your presence. So go on over to Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews. You want to go home or should I continue? We I'm here to serve you. We want to give you. Let's get into the word. Let's go. Those were that was just an appetizer, really. That was just speaking by the, the spirit. Just like I told this guy yesterday when he was playing the guitar. See, it's good to be able to use notes when you're a worship leader, but if you can never come off those notes, then that's just you. Amen. So I was telling him about the patriarch of, of, of contemporary worship, which was Ken Hennings. He's a patriarch for, for uh, Keith Green. Right? Keith Green. Right? You know Keith Green? I don't know. Keith Green was a, he's a patriarch. Because these guys were ahead of their time. See, all the stuff you see now in the old songs and all these people, look, they're good and they're a blessing, but they do not operate in the realm that these guys operate in. Go look at videos. I mean, you know, I'll, I'm not play a song after, but I'm just trying to tell you. And a lot of people, they go, come oh, on, that's boring. I don't like that. They don't know the spirit. That'd be like Lester Summerall getting up here, or Brother Hagin, or 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 uh, a Wigglesworth, and they speak a sermon, and they go, man, that's boring. Because people don't recognize the spirit. Mm -hmm. You understand? They don't know the difference between anointing. They know gifting, but not anointing. Mm -hmm. Anointing destroys the yoke. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Gifting don't do nothing but inspire you in, for a moment. That's it. Inspiration. That's all it is. Right? Mm -hmm. but the anointing impacts and imparts. Amen? Amen. So go to Hebrews, and I want to go to um, Hebrews 1. And this is a word that's popped up. I just want to, I just want to, I got, I got a couple questions. See, you have to be told this. We have to be told this today. Uh -huh. That there ain't no COVID that can overtake you if you're willing to do what God says. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Come on now. You can't, you yeah. don't have to be afraid of COVID. Yeah. Keep, yeah. Let's keep. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Amen. Perfect love casts out fear. Right, right. Right? Now, if, you know, you went through a season and you got COVID or you got something else or whatever, man, learn, grow. Right. Amen. Learn and grow and develop. Mm -hmm. Don't allow things to come into our lives anymore. I told you about two weeks ago, I was under serious attack. Maybe. But man, by three o'clock that morning, that thing broke off. But that's why I said I was sharing with some. I don't expect not that I'm all superior because I'm grown with people. But I don't expect people to live at the level I'm at. But what I do, what I am saying is, match the intensity, match the commitment, mm -hmm. match the pursuit, and manage to grow in knowledge and understanding. Match that, right? Mm -hmm. Go after that. So. Uh, Hebrews, uh, where? Hebrews 12. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I'm going to read something. Let's see. Because uh, this is important. Um, let's see what I'm saying. Let's start right. Let's look at verse 21, right? And so awesome was the sight that Moses even said, I quake exceedingly, exceedingly fear and quake. That's what Moses said when he saw the burning mountain. Amen? Uh -huh. Come on up here. here let, me help, come on, come on, let, me, let me help us to help other people. Look, man, when you, when you have that sense and that awe and that reverence of God, yeah. you won't be worried about COVID. No, you won't. You won't be worried about a this, a that, and you won't. That's why the Lord said, see, we've got to get away from, from the, the Jesus that the world likes right now and get back to the real Jesus. Okay? 
Because the real Jesus said, don't you fear him that has the power to kill the flesh. Mm -hmm. But you better reverence him that has the power and authority to cast into eternity. Amen, amen. You're familiar with all three, the all thing. Amen. Don't you fear no little COVID or some natural? Don't you fear that people are thinking, well, what about all those lives lost in Afghanistan? Well, what about all the people that get killed in the way Amen. Right? See, hell's not a reality. When I even say the word hell today, it, 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 it doesn't really ring a bell with us as Christians because it's not spoken about enough. Now, there's a right way to address hell. It's not talked about enough. So when you mention hell, people go, but hell is a real place. Just like the death chair is a real place. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Execution in the United States is real. Yeah. I saw the other day that a gentleman who got saved, he was going to be uh, executed in some state, Texas or somewhere else, and he wanted the pastor to come in and lay hands on him before he left. So he must have been a Christian in prison. And he's facing, you know, the consequences of his earthly view. Yeah. Apparently, he's been serving God a little. I don't know. He wanted the pastor to come in and literally put his hands on him right before he took the injection. Of the yeah, injection. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Lethal injection. It is injection. Mm -hmm. right? from no, no. So he wanted the pastor to lay hands on him right then. So he's fighting the court system. Let the man have hands laid on him. Amen. It's real. Right. It's real in Afghanistan that, that there's people running around with guns that perhaps are going door to door. It's real. Well, that's all real, but hell is more real than that. Amen. Hell is a real place. And we ought to start doing a teaching on hell so we can become more aware of it. And you don't go to hell for your deeds and your sins and your failures as a Christian or before, because you go to hell by rejecting Jesus, by saying Amen. no Amen. to his gift of salvation that's freely given. Not Amen. All you gotta do is receive it. Amen. My position is there's many people that receive Jesus, and like I said, they'll make heaven but while they live on earth, they're a slave to their body, slave to the devil, and they're out of the will of God. Amen. And they'll leave life early, just Amen. like pasta. Because they look, they look at everything else but him. When the Bible says looking at all. Jesus, author and finisher of your faith. Amen. Amen. He's able to keep you. He's able to keep me. Mm -hmm. I, we trust him. We, we do. trust him. We do, we do. But we've got to feed our heart. We've uh -huh. got to feed our faith. Uh -huh. We've got to stay conscious of how good he is and he wants to protect. It doesn't please the Lord when we look at other things that don't. I'm just telling uh -huh. you, it's out. It don't please the Lord. Look, the man. Mm -hmm. You know, like someone the other day, we went out. It's becoming up even more real. I went to the movies, and I walked into the movies, and I said, "Do you got your vaccination card?" I was there left my vaccination card at home. Mm -hmm. I was like, here's my vaccination card right here. Mm -hmm. No, no, I know. Look, I was going to say, if you've been vaccinated here, I can talk about myself. I will even tell you this. Amen. My point is, Amen. the word is that's what works for me. And like I told someone else, I said, well, well what happened now? You can't go to the gym, you can't go here. Can't go. I said, well, I'm go. But if the Lord told me to back up, then I will. Yeah. But He hasn't told me that. Amen. So I don't do what others do. Yeah, right. It's not rebellion, it's smart. Uh -huh. Well, I, I don't follow what else just because this pastor did it. Well, boy, you do it. God didn't tell me to do it. Uh -huh. So I'm not doing it. And I can't go against my conscience. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't even take flu shots. So why would I freak out now and put something in me? I, I feel like I, I would. I would. I would feel like I'm not doing what I should be doing in faith. I, I'd feel like I'm doing that like to preserve my life. But someone says, you are. Yeah, but I've already given my life to Jesus. Amen. And if car crashes, drugs, alcohol, having killed me, and all the food I ate, and the ice cream, and, and this and that, the other thing, 
pizza. <laughs> Nasty old pigs. Pork chops. Mm. Mama's beans. No, just kidding. <laughs> if any of that ain't guilty, that's me, though. And the day the Lord tells me something, but I can never to follow it. And just like they're not, I woke up in the middle of the night, the Lord said, put on healing scripture. So I plugged it in my ear and went to sleep with healing scripture. Mm -hmm. The Lord felt like I needed a dose. I don't believe that. It doesn't matter what you believe, we're sitting here going free. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is that I believe and act on what he tells me to do. Right, that's right. Amen. I don't know why he just woke it up and said, Here, have some of this. Maybe I had the window open and the draft was coming in. I don't know. Not everything's COVID, too. People still get headaches and colds and whatever else. Yeah. But everything seems to be COVID in this world today. Mm -hmm. You know, so the point is, is I can only do what the Lord and so can you. Amen. But I'll tell you this I put my dependency on Him. Amen. Amen. Now, some people might say, well, the Lord directed me to take this. Well, then he directed you, then go with it. But that's not my position. And even if a person, even if that is a person's position as a Christian, what they should do is stick with looking at Jesus. Because I just told you. Amen. I personally believe this. I personally believe that. Like once it times is one, and it's going to, I promise that, it's going to get faster. And man, man is trying to stop us. Right. They can't run it. When I say man, humanity. Yeah. They can't stop it. Right. And there's a place where God says, man, no, let it go. I'm going to show you right here. Here it goes. And, and, and uh, verse 21, and Moses was awesome, but you come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable company to the generals of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than Abel. What does it say, verse 25? See that you what? That speaks. For if, now let's read it slowly. This is the Bible. Mm -hmm. For if they escaped not, who, re who refused him that spoke on earth? Who are they talking about right there? Moses. Uh -huh. Much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from him. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, what this will do will pull the flack of that little Jesus that the world tried to paint you. Yeah. Because this is Jesus. Yeah. The same Jesus that said to the apostles on the back of the boat. Where's your faith? Right. He didn't say, oh, it's okay, give me a hug. It'll be all right. See, Jesus loves you enough to call you to a level yeah. of faith. And the amazing thing, he helped get you to that level. He right. assists you. And right. the person who said, give my hand. I'm going to walk you right there. I'll walk you. I don't expect you to do it on your own. That's why I shed my blood on a cross. Mm -hmm. I'm going to escort you. I gave you a helper. Uh-huh. That's going to right. assist right. you to bring you to that place of faith where I can really use you then. Uh -huh. Because I want your life, it's already blessed in heavenly places, but I want it to manifest in the earth. But then I want it to manifest and hit so hard that your cup runs over that what spills out of your life is power. Radiant, glorious power. It floods out and beams out rays of love and glory and healings and manifestations. That's what God wants. But we can't do that if we're just focusing on our own lives, can we? Got to go to work, got to eat, got to pay the bill, and this, that, and the other. I hear you. Let it hope it hit you. And then see what happens. And I think even though the devil sent that, there's degrees where the Lord allows things. Mm -hmm. And God's an opportunist in a sense. He allows situations to work in nations to get people to get on board with his plan. Amen. Amen. Just like Hezekiah. Just like us, just like people in the world. You know, woman came to Jesus and said, "My daughter is sick." He said, "I'm not sending to the house of the cross. She's too little." He said, "Yeah, but you know, 
the, the dog eat the bread from his friend. He's like, okay, I get it. Not play here. I must have a nickel. So God will be faith, man. He looked for race, creed, color. What well, he didn't even none of that. He just looked at faith. That was a Syrophoenician woman mm -hmm. who was basically a heathen and a devil. But she came to Jesus. Right? So right here it says, don't see she refused him. There's a lot of people out here. People leave in this church. They're just sitting around thinking they're going to get by and this and that. But that's not what scripture says, man. Right? Wake up. Don't you refuse him. Don't you choose the physicians. Don't you choose. Someone says, yeah, but God works in physicians. Yeah, he does. But if you're sitting in a Bible-based church, he wants you to look to him more. Amen. You won't need a physician if you're looking to him. And you say, well, I know a lot of Christians that need a physician. I can't. I can't speak for them. I can only give an account of myself and tell you, you and I need, I'm not saying physicians out there, I just went to the dentist. You know, went to the dentist, that, but all that having teeth issues at the time was all around about my being negligent when I was younger. Now, I listerine my teeth, I water pick my teeth, I brush my teeth, and then I peroxide my teeth. I use two toothpaste on my teeth. I mean, that's pretty excessive. Hey, when you have had some uh, corruption in your teeth, you do everything you can to keep them suckers nice. Right? Double up. Double up. So, you know, that's been, you know, a lot of stuff. So anyway, he says right here, don't you refuse him uh, whose voice then shook the earth. You ready? Yeah. But now he's promised saying, yet once more, I'm going to shake Ready? Uh -huh. Not only the earth, but also heaven. Uh -huh. And this word yet once more signifies the removing. Everybody say removing. Remove. Removing of those things that are shaken, uh -huh. as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Uh -huh. Okay? So there's things that are shaken and baking in this earth today. Uh -huh. And God says, once more, I'll shake not only, I'll shake the heavens. Yep. The powers that be, no. come on now, come on here. Those principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, come on, they're trembling right now. Uh -huh, they know uh -huh. their day is short, right? So yeah, let's yeah. look at this. But here, I don't want to get to my, my, my cherry on top of the cake first, right here. But wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. There you go. Uh -huh. Whatever else is shaking out there in the world, I don't care. If you're shaking, there's a reason you're shaking. There's a reason your life is in turbulence and shaking right now. And you better stop and ask yourself why. Because the scripture says, and you receive in a kingdom which cannot be shaken. That means God didn't say, oh, okay. If, if, if everything's shaking in COVID, you're going to be, uh, uh, you know, you're uneasy, you're you're insecure, you don't know what's going on. No, no, no. You receive the kingdom on the inside. Jesus ain't never moved by what goes on in the earth. He ain't moved by sickness. He ain't moved by people dying. Come on. Uh -huh. He ain't moved Amen. by their opinions. Amen. He ain't moved by their evil threats. Amen. He ain't moved by... Anybody else? Governments or anything? I'm going to show you. Amen. Let us have grace whereby we may serve him acceptably with godly reverence and fear. You hear that? Uh -huh. Like Moses. Here's the problem in America. Here's the problem in America. Just like Moses shook and reverence. See, you ain't got no shakers in America. Amen. Amen. Come on. They ain't got no fear and godly reverence. Amen. Amen. Come on now. When you got godly fear and reverence uh -huh. for him, you ain't worried about no COVID. Well, well. <laughs> you ain't worried about anything else. Uh -huh. Where your next meal is going to come from. You got godly reverence and fear. Yeah, yeah. Honor, respect, uh -huh. awe. Yeah. You're waiting for your next miracle to hit. You're not uh -huh. concerned about what's going on externally. They a lot of afflictions, but for a moment. Amen. But for a moment. But he's working a far more exceeding eternal way of glory on the inside. You got that treasure in the earth and vessel. Excellency of powers of him, not of you. 
While we look not to the things that are seen, but to the unseen. For the uh -huh. things that are seen are temporal. This too shall pass. Uh -huh. Amen. COVID shall pass. Right, right, right. COVID Delta, COVID American Airlines, COVID Southwest, COVID whatever. It will pass. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It came Amen. to pass. Passing Amen. on by. Amen. Amen. If not, we don't Amen. need to be here Read this word. Amen. Come on. I don't care if that other people come in here with masks on. Amen. God loves them and helps people. Amen. That's good. But that ain't where he wants you. Right, right. He wants you walking in the anointing. Amen. Just like those those fly machines at, at restaurants. The blue things are just sitting there. The fly goes in. Zach. That's how you're supposed to live. Amen. Built up so that whatever tries to come and stick can't. Amen. 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 Even when you're like yesterday, we were coming from a certain place. I told you there was a couple, couple couples that were with the alternative lifestyle. And do you know, I'll just be honest with you, a lot of those people, when they really meet, they know. None of those people ever came up and say hi to me. I never even once told people I'm a Christian. They just know. Because the spirit senses things. Uh -huh. You know that? Amen. Of course, you could go out of your way, but I was kind of in a rest mode, so I really wasn't you know, engaged with everybody. Uh -huh. But I noticed that around that kind of individual. They don't ever really engage. People can sense things. How many of you know that? Amen. They Amen. can sense presence. Yeah, I'm not saying they sense, they just sense. Like, yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't know if they sense, but people sense stuff. Yeah. Not not judgment or anything, but just, you know. Yeah, they mean, sense. I'm light and darkness senses light. I understand. You yeah. understand? Uh -huh. Same thing with drug addicts or everybody else. Just like the other day, my mom was sitting in that car and that crazy person came down the street and she had a voice like a demon yelling, talk with her voice, and banged on my mom's car and I walked out. And I just said, keep it moving. And they went, bye bye bye. And I didn't even plan to do that, it just flowed out of my spirit. Mm -hmm. It just came out of my spirit because I was thinking, oh, gee, what do I do? You know, you're trying to figure out how to deal with a situation, how to approach a situation. But how many of you know? It says, in that hour, the Holy Ghost will speak. Amen. He just Amen. came right through my vocal voice, keep it moving. I was like, three little words, keep it moving, and they just went, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, that was pretty easy. I mean, this person was like, yay tall, and full, fully charged with the enemy. You hear the loud voice of the lock. And then when they turned the corner, I could hear them all the way down there still. Louder than me, if I spoke that loud, my, my vocal cords were loud. But they were in in, they were charged and confused with something that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. No, it's not that I would mean, mean, it's just that sometimes the Lord would have you speak to somebody like that, but apparently at this point it was, keep it moving! Mm -hmm. So anyway, he says, you got a kingdom for our God is a consuming fire. Let me read this in a hand. Go over to Haggai real quick. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Hagar and Luke. As you're going to Hagar, go to Luke. Come on. We'll get there. I'm close all right, up. All right, all right. You hit, you hit, you hit. I just want to show you, you've received the kingdom on, that's on, unshakable. On. Unshakable, unbreakable. Luke 21. Let's hit Luke 21 real quick. Real quick. I'm going to go to Hagar. Luke 20, there's a lot here. We're not going to get into it all. I do want to read you this, this part because he talks about the different things that are going on. And then he comes to verse uh, 25 and he says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. That sounds like Joel, but that sounds like Acts 2. And the stars and upon the earth, listen, distress. The stress of what? Nations. Nations. 
distress, and, and we have to, we, we don't really understand that word probably like we should because we don't have like the Greek one or something. Um, So I'm going to look at the answer. And it said, and there will be signs, and upon the earth there will be distress, trouble, and anguish of nations in bewilderment and perplexity, without resources, left wanting, embarrassed, in doubt, not knowing which way to turn. Can I be honest with you? Come on, I'll wait. Now, I'm sure this is going to be fulfilled as we go along more. That comes out like that again. Perplexed, embarrassed, not knowing where to turn. You have people jumping on planes. Don't, don't you understand how distressed someone is to think they can hop on a C-17 and hang on to it in the middle of 30,000 feet in the air where it's freezing and at 300 at least miles per hour? I mean, going 100 miles per hour in your truck is a lot. Imagine going 300 miles per hour up in the sky, even 200. And there's nothing shielding you. But <laughs> Imagine being under that kind of pressure for hours. Mm. If you can even... And, and the other day, I was looking at some article, and they said that people try to hang on underneath the wheel wells, but what they said was that see, people don't think. They're in stress, so they respond. The wheel wells, when the wheels come up and go back into the wheel well, they said that the tires, the rotation of the tires is so fast, it is shredding them. And the reality is that's why I was listening to a pilot on a thing. And he said that's why pilots are told as soon as the, the wheels come up that hit the brakes, that will stop the rotation of the tire. He said most pilots don't do it, they just let that line up. But you're supposed to hit the brakes. So not only you're dealing with it, there's many different components. But what forced somebody is the pressure, the adversity, because they had a shakable kingdom. They had a shakable kingdom. See, their kingdom is this way. And I'm not saying those people young or old or whatever didn't know. Sad. But look what he says right here. He says, distress, depression. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after the things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now listen to this. Men's hearts failing for fear. Why? What's the greatest fear? Thank you. The greatest fear is death. People are afraid. They don't want to die. So if you don't want to die, it's real simple. Get under the shadow of the Almighty. It's Amen. Amen. It's Amen. How Amen. Amen. It's simple. You're going to die physically, but if you don't want to perish the way the world is going to perish, then abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a simple message. God offers protection, keeping power, preservation power. Come on, my blood works. Amen. 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 There's joy along the way. There's abundance along the way. Come on, it's not just he protects you and you serve this boring God. No, you're serving someone, knowing someone that fascinates you, that loves you like no one else. That when you see like, like, like Hezekiah, he loved my soul. My father loves me. Because you know you ain't perfect. In your earthly walks, he's like, My father loves me, man. He's patient, he's kind, he never leave me, me forsake me. He, you know, he's there for me. He who could be against me. The Lord's on my side, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do. See, he didn't say, I will not fear what man can do because man works through the enemy, works through man. I'll not be afraid. Look what else says, a couple more verses. And he says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming with power. And when those things begin to come to pass, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. See, you look up. You look up because it's coming. Amen? Be expecting. It's coming. I don't know. Five years, two years, one year, 10, 20 years. I know this. It's coming. It's on the way, friend. I mean, if you and I live another 50 years, maybe in 50 it'll come. It's on the way, though, man. 
Look at all the stuff going on as never before. The world is a little bit insane right now. Probably going to just keep going that way. Mm -hmm. Look at this. It's exciting times. And then he tells them, he goes, look, man, behold the fig tree and so forth. And then he goes, don't you understand? He goes, this. He tells them, look, man, when you see a tree and it's blossoming in this, no, the season is ready for harvest. And then he goes on, so what are you supposed to do? Take heed, lest at any time you be overcharged. Verse 36, watch and pray. Verse 19, possess your souls, settle it in your hearts. Verse 14, meditate. Don't meditate. Holy Ghost is working. Now, go on. Verse 80 says, take heed that you be not deceived. For, for many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, and the time draws near. Go out unto them and follow them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, don't you be terrified. For those things got to come to pass. Put the ending in. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, signs, earthquakes. We just had another earthquake in Haiti. Various places, famines, pestilences, which is uh, 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 viruses as well. That's what it means when we look it up. Fearful sights. Look at that. Fearful sights. You ever thought of that one? What are fearful sights? Horrific things that demons do to one another. You know, fearful sights. So all these things. They'll happen and continue to happen. Now I'm going to hang out real quick. Be on your guard. Be aware. The one verse says, keep awake and watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive, ready. Ready, ready, ready. Praying that you'll have full strength and ability and be counted worthy to escape the things so that people stand in the presence of the Son of God. People then, he says, but take heed to yourself because, uh, and be on guard because people's hearts will, will be overburdened. They will be depressed. They will be weighed down with giddiness and a headache, nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness, worldly worries and cares pertaining to the busyness of this life. They will come upon people suddenly like a noose and a trap. Isn't that what's going on in the world today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've got some people pretending they've checked out like it ain't real because they can't cope. Here's a good right, example. Right. I went to the bank yesterday and talked to the how do you feel about what's going on in the earth? And she said, I just don't, I don't, I don't deal with it. She's like, I was a mom, a mom as a nation. And, and it kind of like happened to our nation like that. And she says, and she goes, I don't even deal with all that. I don't want to be depressed. See, so what people do is tuck it away in the inner resources of their mind. They don't want to deal with stuff because they don't know how. I didn't say anything. Amen. But they don't know how. And you can't educate someone in these areas. Because the fight of faith is something that's of the wrong kind. It's you and I that have. And there's a lot of Christians that don't want to deal with it. Even though they have the opportunity to find out who's born and what's available and all these things. They don't. Because they're sold. They're seeking. They, there's outward. They haven't developed evil conditions. That they need to live a life free and a life of dominion. Amen. Amen. Hang on, real quick. Really, you are ready to receive the tide of all This is a good transition of things. Hey guys, up there in the middle of the Hey guys. Chapter two, I believe. There's some shaking going on. But guess what? Things are gonna shake, things are gonna move, but who guess who ain't gonna be moved? Guess who ain't getting moved? Guess who ain't getting moved? Guess who has a kingdom? You know what kingdom is? God's domain, God's dominion, God's place of influence. Guess who ain't going to be shaken? 
Amen. Yes, you ain't gonna be shit. You know what? We receive the kingdom. Our kingdom. We're not gonna be shaken. Now, if your mind starts feeling shaken, that means you just need to reinforce kingdom realities. Hey, God. Chapter 2. Just a couple of different places where he uses this again. Actually, he was in England about three years ago, four years ago, I went to this church, and the Lord said, Speak this. And people just fell out. Now, I think people have made reference to the Lord before it ever happened. He said, uh, look, look right here in, in Haggai 2, verse uh, 6. For this is what the Lord of hosts says. Yet once, this is where he was about, once in a little while, I'll shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desire of the nations shall come, and I'll fill this house with glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. The glory of the latter house will be better than the former. Then look over in verse 20 now. And again, the word came to Haggai in the four and twentieth year of the month, and said, Speak unto the Lord, the governor of Judah. He says, I'm going to shake the hands. Right here. And I'll overthrow the throne, just overthrow the throne of kingdoms. The authority of certain kingdoms will be overthrown. I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. I will overthrow the chariots. Now think about the chariots. What, what did a chariot mean in those days? See, so those don't look at it today because you got a call. A chariot had to do with strength of that kingdom. How many chariots they had? It's like saying, how many uh, uh F 17s does your fleet have today? Or how many Blackhawks or Apaches? He says, I'll overthrow those. Those that ride in them will be overthrown too. And the horses and the riders will all come down everywhere by the sword of his blood. The Lord, see, the Lord will work and shape not only the heaven, but the earth. So no matter how much you say Jesus loves, God still has a plan. He's going to do his plan. You just got to know. And you can't think, well, Jesus would never do that. Look, friend, there's a shaking and a moving and a shifting going on. We just read it in Hebrews and he said, all the things are going to be shaken, but guess who ain't going to be shaken? You! You! Believers! The body of Christ! You come if you're going to do your part. If you're going to do your part, what's your part? What's your part? Reverence, godly awe, value, dependency, trust, exercising faith. Amen. He says, I'll shake things. And he says, the gold and silver even. Come on. The gold Amen. and the silver. I like, I'm going to read it first. Uh, Maria's going to come and see the ties on I'm gonna, and, and I'll tell you this. And tell other people. You know, come to church and tell them and encourage one another. Also, tell them to be a tither and a giver. This is what 1 Corinthians 8 says. If anyone imagines uh, that he has come to know and understand much of divine things without love, he doesn't perceive, recognize, understand as strongly and clearly, nor has he become intimately acquainted with anything that he ought to, or as is necessary. But if one, here is receiving a kingdom. If one loves God truly, here it is. A lot of people say they love God. He says, with affection, reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessings, he is known by God. Recognized as worthy of his intimacy and love. He is owned by God. Amen. Verse 6 says, For us, there is only one God, one Father. He is the source of all things. For whom we have life, and our Lord Jesus, through and by whom are all things, and through and by whom we ourselves exist. Nevertheless, not all believers have this knowledge. <laughs> That's what it says. But you and I do. You and I do right here. And we want to grow. It's not, but we have not yet obtained. What does God want to do? Where does he want to bring? You and I got to have faith. Choose. You have faith. I shouldn't say you and I. 
choose to release your faith and do the necessary things to uh, reinforce, build yourself up, be that, that, that voice of the word and truth only. Do not acknowledge the world. Don't acknowledge them. Why? That's, an un that's a shakable kingdom. You have an unshakable kingdom. Take the time to feed on the word. Amen. Don't be burying your head in the Old Testament too. Amen. You need to find out who you are in Christ and renew your mind. Understand the love of God. Length, depth, breadth, height, and love of God. That's for you. Put your faith in that love and Amen. build yourself up in it. Amen. You have an unshakable kingdom. Love never fails. Amen. Never comes obsolete. Never comes to an end. Knowing how much he loves you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if a symptom comes on. Ward that thing off. Amen. What are you willing to give to see the glory and power of God manifest in your life? What are you willing to give in exchange? That's what it is for you and I. Amen? Amen. And he says, things are shaking. Mm -hmm. You and I, we have an unshakable kingdom. So while everybody else is shaking, and they're going, whoa! Whoa, what's going on in the world? Whoa, we're like stable, Amen. immovable, uh -huh. and what? What does the scripture say? All, what? Stable, immovable, fixed is the amplified, but always abounding in the work and will of the Lord. Amen. See, they're shaking, they're stuck. But you and I are stable and moving forward and going forward in Him Amen. and in other things. Don't be fooled. Some of us that have been believing God for finances, when the shaking and the moving happens, man, we're going to be moving into what God has. Amen. The earth is mine. The gold, the silver is mine. The fullness thereof. The world and all they that they dwell therein. Come on now. We don't Amen. cast away our confidence. I'm waiting for my supernatural day of visitation. My, my day of blessing. Amen, amen. Amen. The day where the Lord swears up and my double comes into manifestation and operation. Amen. The Lord said the gold and silver is mine. That's why I don't run around thinking like, like, oh my God, this and that. And I don't have a job. And what about this? And what about that? And then it ain't a bunch of disloyalty. God demands loyalty. He demands loyalty. That's why you can't think, where will I be? And when will I get a house? And what about a car? And what about a this? And what about a that? What what take no thought saying? What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? What about this? Won't you take thoughts and the Lord is my provider. He's faithful. He's Jehovah Jireh. All my needs are met. I ain't lacking nothing. I'm full of supply. The resources are coming on in. Supernatural favor. The blessing of the Lord. You got, but you got to keep your jaws moving. Amen. Amen. A lot of people, they got their jaws moving, but it ain't moving on the word. You got to move your mouth on the word. Right, Amen. Right. Speaking God's word will release his power in your life. You want to see power? Speak his word. Amen. You want power to weaken? Speak the world's God with you. Right, right. Amen. That's why we also have to tell people the only healing is Jesus. That's why I tell people. I tell them. Look, I, I tell them. I said, sorry, man, but that shot. Look, man, that thing's obsolete now. I got the real booster for you. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Right. Feed yourself so much. Mm -hmm. Just like you go to an all you can eat thing, people feed themselves and they're fat and they're big and they're just like overweight with food on the earth. We'll just get overweight with the glory. Amen. Be overweight with the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Be so fat. That's actually what it says. The yeah. fat is the yoke, the fat, the heaviness of God. Amen. Be overweight with the glory. Amen. 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 This message was brought to you by Living Water Fellowship San Francisco. You can connect with us on Facebook or email us at sflivingwater.com.